Hey everybody, what's up? Uh, this video is brought to you by Linode Cloud Computing. If you're looking for web hosting, check them out. They're going to save you a lot over Azure AWS. I've been using them for almost 10 years. And if you want to know about, more about their products, check out their YouTube channel. They have a bunch of videos there that are talking about all that stuff. They're the largest privately owned cloud computing company, and they've been around for over 15 years. All right, so in this video, what I'm going to be talking about is what I like about Golang. Google's popular programming language has been around for over a decade now, and it seems to be gaining a lot of traction. So as I mentioned, this language has been around for over a decade now, which is really important when you decide, okay, do I really want to pick this up? Because Go is a little bit different from writing Java or JavaScript or even C Sharp. A lot of the C-based languages, Go is somewhat C derivative or whatever, but it's still, it's a little bit different in my opinion. So I guess I should mention for the people that don't know, I have a background in like C Sharp, Node.js, JavaScript, I do a lot of React. Uh, so I, and I do a lot of Python and stuff and I dabble with this and that. So I'm not an expert in Go or anything anything like that, but I have played around with it quite a bit. Uh, so I find it slightly different from all those other languages. But some of the great things about Go is that it was created by some of the original inventors of really our modern day computer science and like all of the stuff that we have these days. Like Ken Thompson, he worked directly with Dennis Ritchie on uh, working with the B language and also C. Uh, so that is awesome because Dennis Ritchie's like really the godfather of all programming. But then you have Rob Pike, who's also been involved all the way back in Bell Labs with Unix and all that stuff. So uh, that's pretty awesome. And because it was created directly from people that worked at Google, it was really to bridge the gap between the speed that C++ brought to Google stack and then the ease of development with Python. Python could not compare with C++ with speed, uh, but C++ was uh, time intensive to write. So Google decided the Go programming language should be rather verbose and very specific about how to do everything. So while some people might say that the verbosity is boring and all that, uh, when, it's, when we talk about getting the, the job done, a lot of times simply spelling something out and not being too crafty is the best way to go. So another good thing about Go is because of the backing of Google and all the money and manpower behind that, uh, you could see one of the languages that's commonly uh, really put up against Go because it came out around the same time as Mozilla's Rust language. And if you look at the, the two here on Stack Overflow, uh, Rust is definitely making some headway there, but um, Go has a slight advantage. And also it would seem as well from a jobs perspective, but really when we're talking about jobs, Go is probably not going to be the best language to get you in the door unless you become like a Go expert because there's really not as many opportunities in Go as like many other languages like C Sharp or Java or JavaScript. Uh, but that, you know, changes over time. And with these trends, if you hit the ground running, get in early, uh, it could pay off in the end. All right, so another great thing about Go is that it's cross-platform and free. So you can see from the downloads page here that you can get it for Mac, Windows, or Linux. It's also got really awesome debugging capability support with free uh, text editor, IDE, Visual Studio Code. So if you get the, uh, just grab the Golang extension, which is free, you can see almost four and a half million downloads. This gives you the ability to step through your Go code just like anything else. So uh, debugging is just as good as, as other languages out there. So as an example, I'll just go ahead and hit the breakpoint, press F5, and you can see that we do have debugging support. Um, so another thing too with Go is that I like how there's not a big discrepancy about how the packages and um, that a project needs are contained. So Go was very opinionated about how you set up a workspace and really all of your dependencies are gonna be really self-contained within that workspace pro uh, project that you're building. So when you compare that to something like node modules uh, or Python with pip, you're not really having to deal with the fact, okay, is something globally accessible, is something locally accessible, shit, something's grabbing something, you know, when I wanted it to be local and it's global, I didn't know that, you know, and like all that stuff, it, it leaves all that out of there. As soon as you learn how to build a Go project, it's very easy to understand all of the dependency structure. So another great thing about Go is that it has a robust, large standard library. So a lot of the things that you need to do, like here you can see I'm using the FMT module to write to the, the console. Uh, there's also the time module. So if you're ever dealing with, you know, date times and things like that, that's all built in with Go. You don't have to have any sort of external uh, package or anything. Now, these as a tutorial are all just three of my own custom packages, just as an example. But um, it, it, once again, as far as like how these packages are imported, it's pretty easy to understand once you know how Go works. So here is an example of 
tapping into the strings module which is built in and you can see like strings contain so I, I you know simply do that it's going to return a boolean in this case it'll be false because moon doesn't match that but uh it, you know those are all built in you don't have to actually write that yourself or anything all right, so the next thing is going to be that Go has much greater uh, capabilities when it comes to integer types. There's a lot of different integer, both signed and unsigned integers, and um, you can tap into that if you want. So one of the great things is like when you're writing C++, you have to deal with garbage collection, which can be really, really difficult. Go handles that for you. But in addition to that, like if you decide, okay, I need some sort of unsigned integer and you know it's going to be some uh, small number or something like that, then you could go with this variable type. Uh, you don't always have to be explicit, like to say that you want one of these, but it, it gives you that option uh, to make your program more efficient. All right, so a lot of people are using Go because it's much faster than other languages like Python. Part of that is because of the design that was brought in, things like channels. It's built with concurrency in mind. It's a modern language that's built for multi-core processors, whereas some of the older languages were not. So Go is going to have some major speed and uh, advantage over other languages. To give you an idea of the speed differences, I'll link this link, uh, I'll put this link in the description tab here, but you can see that it, like Go blows away Python in pretty much all speed tests that are done here. Um, it's not even close. So it, it's unfair to Python because again, Python is a dynamically interpreted duck type language, whereas Go is, is strongly typed, uh, or they're both strongly typed, I'm sorry, but statically typed. So that is something that you should also keep in mind as well. If you're not familiar with statically typed languages here, you have to be explicit about saying, okay, this function is taking in two parameters and those parameters are of type int. Uh, Python would guess that for you and you don't have to specify that, but with Go you do. Also, here's the return type for the method. All right, so those are all the reasons why I love Go. Also, uh, I'll be using it more in the future. When it comes to websites, you can build them faster, obviously. Uh, another great thing is like when you're trying to build executable projects that you just want to just distribute somewhere, Go has all that built in as well. Uh, Python, I always had to deal with like Py, 2exe, and all these other projects, but uh, Go has all that built in. So this is not to hate on Python. Uh, I could actually provide a ton of reasons why I love Python as well, and I've already done that, but this is all about Go. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching. And if you guys are learning the code, make sure you check out my website, codehawk.com. I will have a course for Golang released pretty soon, and I I'm in the process of working on that right now, but there's already a lot of stuff out there.